Hi, and welcome to this edition of Preservation Workshops, or How to Be Your Own Curator at Home. I'm Sue Taylor, Chief Curator for the New Mexico Museum of Space History. And today is going to be a little bit of a fun program, talking about trivial preservation trivia. And what that means is how sometimes the English language can get very confusing. Let's take a moment and you'll see what I mean by this. Every time I look, there seems to be more and more. I feel like I'm peeling rabbits. We ought to make you peel all of them. Wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here. With me trying to be a corporal, I'll be lucky if they don't take away my citizenship papers. I hope I can square myself with Tony. When do you figure on seeing her? About the second week in December. Quit staring at me, will you? I can't understand it. I've been peeling just as fast as you fellas. I know, but there are two of us. Oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. Yes, sir, we certainly made those mountains disappear. Hey, I can't open my hand. Yeah, give me that pipe. Careful now, leave the wrist. <clears throat> Thank you, that's better. But you guys had twice as many spuds as I did. You were shirking. Come on, Steve. Well, we're not going to talk about peeling potatoes. Although when you hear the word peeling, when it comes to your antiques or paintings, again, it's not potatoes, but it's the paint. And that's one of the things that we'll be talking about today. Various words that people hear, but are not sure that they quite understand. Not just peeling, but flaking, and oh, cleavage. It's not what you think. Let's go on. Let's start with cleavage. No, not this kind of cleavage. This kind, which is the separation of paint from the ground layer of a painting, which may cause cracking, blistering, like you see here, or bubbling and flaking. Let's talk about peeling and what it means in preservation, not potatoes. Peeling is usually used to describe a thin layer of paint that is becoming detached from a surface and curling back on itself. It may also be used to describe the appearance of veneered surfaces that are delaminating. When I was curator of the Wallace House in Old Dutch Parsonage in Somerville, New Jersey, my first task was to re-adhere the veneer that had come loose on an 18th century low chest, similar to what's happening to the veneer in this picture. I used hide glue, which is water soluble since no repair to an artifact should be permanent. Perhaps you've been told that your painting is suffering from blanching. This is not what you do to vegetables before freezing, but it's where a previously clear and transparent surface for example, a varnish, has become white and or opaque, such as in this painting. It is similar in appearance to bloom, which we'll talk about later. Here is the painting after restoration. You may have heard of the word accretion, not accretin. An accretion is a solid piece of foreign matter which attaches to the surface of an object, such as on this glass found in an archaeological dig. This picture has suffered from bleaching. No, not from using Clorox bleach. This is where a material becomes lighter in color due to the action of various solvents or light, 
Sunlight, especially the ultraviolet component, can be particularly damaging. When you hear the word friable, it doesn't mean that your chicken is friable. In preservation, it means some materials used to create works of art, such as pastels and charcoal, like this drawing, contain very little binding agent. Friable media can separate from their support through friction or abrasion, or may easily crumble into a powdery form. Wood damaged by dry rot may also have a friable surface. You have taken your books to a bookseller and he says your books have grazing. No, not like going to the salad bar, but where surfaces have been partially eaten by insects, such as silverfish and book lice. Here are some grazing book lice. This is or was a grazing bookworm. Yes, they are real insects, usually the larva of beetles, moths, or cockroaches who love anything paper. Have you ever heard of vinegar syndrome? This is a condition of acetate film decay characterized by shrinkage, like this, or embrittlement. The generation of acetic acid vapor will smell like vinegar. These coins have bronze disease. Trust me, you can't get this disease unless you are made of bronze. Bronze disease is the corrosion of copper and bronze objects caused by the production of copper chlorides, which break down the normally protective surface patinas. You will notice light blue-green blisters form on the surface. When touched, they crumble and fall away, leaving a pitted surface. The corrosion is cyclic, setting up reactive and destructive corrosion cells on the surface of the metal. Acid migration is not the same as bird migration. Acid migration is the transfer of acidic substances between two surfaces in contact with each other, causing localized staining and discoloration, like this example of a newspaper clipping causing discoloration on the page it was next to. Sometimes it's called acid transfer. Someone may be looking at a historic document you own and will say, you have bleeding. No, not you, the ink or paint on your paper. When an ink, paint, or dye has become partially soluble and has wicked into surrounding areas of the support, usually paper or textile, it will result in a blurry appearance. This is called bleeding. Last but not least, let's talk about bloom. Not when flowers bloom, but rather corrosion or mold on metals that cause a loose flower-like corrosion product when exposed to a moist environment like this metal object was. Remember this from blanching? Blanching is similar to bloom, which on paintings or varnished objects will be seen as a cloudy appearance within the varnish. These words are sometimes interchangeable. This was probably caused by the presence of moisture on the surface of the paint or within the varnish itself. Bloom can also be used to describe the visible appearance of active mold spores. Well, I hope you had some fun with those words. You'd be amazed how many times museum professionals, curators, and conservators, when they are trying to explain to their clients what is going on with their pieces, they sometimes do run into a little bit of a definition barrier. Again, thank you for joining me, Sue Taylor, Chief Curator for the New Mexico Museum of Space History. Yes, I have cats, and you just heard Georg again because she made it into the last video. She wanted to make it into this one too. Anyway, Chief Curator for the New Mexico Museum of Space History for preservation workshops or how to be your own curator at home, Trivial Preservation Trivia. Please subscribe to the museum's YouTube 
page where you'll see other programs as well. Other preservation workshops, kitchen chemistry, and even going into the deep and darkest vaults of the archives. Stay home, stay safe, and stay well.